<laughs> about being here, but I'm excited at the same time. And thinking that it is it a coincidence that um, James Alfred Brown is at my height. I mean, I couldn't imagine doing the um, pyramid thing with the boys up there. But um, James Alfred Brown was uh, a one faggy boy, and he was born in New Merca, which is a country town as well, and his parents moved um, to one faggy, they were dairy farmers. And he had two older brothers uh, who also enlisted in the war. And um, James uh, left school at 16 to uh, work on the farm when his parents moved down to one faggy, um, milking the cows. And uh, he did that for about six months. And then he got a job as a carter for the one faggy mine. Now, for those of you who don't know what a carter is, um, a carter makes sure that uh, the skips are full. So, um, of course, they didn't have the use of pit ponies, um, which carry the, the coal in big skips uh, from the bottom of the, of the shaft right up to the top. And so what James would have done, or what other carters would have done in his situation, would make sure that all the skips are full, and then they would walk the skips up, either pushing or pulling them up to the top of the shaft. Um, so a carter had to, uh, was a diligent worker, had to be fit and strong, and not only get on with the, um, the, the men in charge at the top of the mine, but be able to communicate with uh, the men who would um, coal, this, um, mine the, the seams of coal underground. So I can imagine that um, being a country boy as well, he wouldn't have been short of a word, and being able to get along with other people. Um, at this stage, my head and my heart are, are filled with um, other stories that I've looked at from the Wampaggy men so far, um, and so I'd like to um, remember them whilst I'm talking about um, James, and also um, for you to think about the connections that you have with war and have them in your head as well, um, because I think that's the best way that we can understand it is by connecting with it. Um, James enlisted on the 10th of December in 1914 um, as an 18 year old young man and uh, he was in the uh, second reinforcement at um, uh, Gallipoli, uh, Anzac Bay. Um, he was wounded twice in Gallipoli, he was shot in the foot once, um, it took him four weeks to recover from that and then he was uh, buried up to his head unconscious um, by um, so you can imagine what what is thought what, when they saw him lying there um, obviously you think the worst but you know um, and then he was in the evacuation of Gallipoli and he came to the Western Front and uh, he was uh, missing in action and then um, announced killed in action um, and he died on uh, the 10th of August 1918, uh, 44 months after the exact date that he enlisted. I know that um, James and his other comrades have left a wonderful legacy and one that we can see today and, and I think what we need to think about as well is those um, people all around the world who are still involved in conflicts and in pe peacekeeping as well around the world and I think it's really important that we not only honour, remember and commemorate um, the fallen Anzacs but those people who t continue to um, make this world um, a peaceful place for us all to live in and grow up in and hopefully um, we can instil that in our kids in our classroom and continue to be enlightened and refreshed and energised and um, honoured by revisiting stories like James. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, um, <clears throat> thanks for coming, <laughs> and mm. thank you. Mm. And this is for um, 